Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Doyle, and I am a co-founder and the Vice President of Customer Success and Support at InspectPoint. I will be moderating today's presentation, and I am joined today by Guy Jones, Product Manager for Portable Fire Extinguishers, and Richard Boyd, Product Specialist for Portable Fire Extinguishers, both from Amorex. They have a lot of really great information to share with us, so I will not take up too much time. But before I turn it over to them, I just wanted to let you know quickly that after the presentation, we're going to have roughly 15 minutes or so for questions. And if anything comes up regarding the presentation or any topics, feel free to drop those in the question area on the GoToWebinar control panel on the side of your screen. Everyone is muted. That is by design to keep background noise to a minimum. But like I said, questions we want to hear. And those should be dropped in that question box. And we'll have about 15 minutes or so at the end. Um, anything that we do not get through during that time frame will be addressed through email afterwards. So don't worry. All your questions will be addressed. Um, if at any point in time, too, you have any follow-up questions, Guy and Richard will have their contact information. And if there's anything in regards to InspectPoint that you want to see, um, you can always reach out to us at sales at inspectpoint.com for any questions or to set up a demo. Um, so without further ado, that is all of my general housekeeping that I have on my end. Um, so I'm going to hand this over to Richard and Guy. So gentlemen, the presentation is all yours. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, for for uh, organizing this and inviting us to uh, talk a little bit today about um, the, the world we live in now. Um, you know, things have changed in the last uh, last year, uh, and you know as things change, uh, we feel that it's important as you get to, to back to work to uh, reevaluate your, uh, your your hazards and make sure you've got the right product in the right place. Um, as Jennifer said, I, I'm Guy Jones. I'm the product manager at uh, uh, Portable Extinguishers at Amrex. And with me is, is Richard Boyd. Um, Richard, uh, if we can just get you to introduce yourself very quickly. Yeah, yeah of course. Thanks, Guy. So uh, like he just mentioned, my name is Richard Boyd, and I am the product specialist here at Amrex Corporation for Portable Extinguishers. So I've been here for three years, and we are eager to share with you some knowledge that we have accumulated over the years and what we have seen in today's changing environment, um, mainly due in part to the coronavirus. So hopefully this presentation will provide some insight to that. And um, without further ado, I think we'll get started. Guy? Great. Thanks, Richard. Um, so I thought we'd start out just kind of a, a brief overview of um, the way things have gone um, this year. You know, our, our First quarter for 2020 looked to be uh, fantastic. Everyone was was very uh, happy with the way things were, were going. I remember going to the, the NAFED conference uh, in March and a lot of smiling faces. Everyone was very, uh, very happy with the, the state of the economy, uh, the state of their business. You know, extinguishers were, were doing well. Uh, restaurant systems were doing well. Um, you know, all in all, everything was, was going really good in the economy. Uh, second quarter was a totally different story. That's when we really started to see the, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak in, in the U.S. And with that came shutdowns, uh, lockdowns, and you know, real hardships uh, in, uh, across the country. You know, restaurants in particular have, have really had a, um, you know, a hard time you know, for this year. But um, Q3 is a different story. So we're starting to see some improvement in our, our third quarter, uh, which is, which is you know, welcome news for everyone. And we're seeing some strength in uh, construction, uh, transportation, and outdoor activities. So anything that's outdoors is good. Uh, now construction, um, it has been good you know, all through this year. And we see some of that momentum going into next year. Hopeful that uh, we'll be able to, you know, keep that momentum. Um, though construction can lag, so uh, we are we are watching construction closely. Transportation's been good. You know, certain uh, aspects of transportation are, are picking up. 
Uh, we're seeing a lot more of our uh, heavy duty trucks, um, you know, requiring fire extinguishers. So that's good. And then outdoor activity is, is, is great. RVs, it's been the best year for uh, recreational vehicles ever. Um, so they have been, um, you know, requiring fire extinguishers um, in, you know, really anything that goes along with an RV. So they've done great. You know, hospitality uh, remains weak, though. Um, hotel occupancy is down 30 percent um, over uh, pre-COVID numbers. You know, we also see that travel is, um, is hurting. Uh, the aviation industry is hurting. You know, um, TSA checkpoints are processing 50 percent fewer travelers than they were pre-COVID. So that, that is a real uh, downturn there. Um, but it's not all bad news. Um, we do see some, you know, stop and go economy. So we, we get a, we get some traction uh, in some parts of the economy. Um, the virus picks back up and things slow down. So it's going to be dependent on, you know, a, a lot of things. Uh, the future is dependent on, uh, you know, how, how we handle the virus and how uh, how our localities and, and local governments allow us to, to conduct our business. This is a, a slide that I've got here that I, I use um, this regularly. It just gives you an indication of you know, how things are doing in the United States. Um, and it has this nice you know, back to normal index. And I get this from CNN.com, uh, their, their business site. But uh, based on their information and information that I, uh, I use uh, to help you know, gauge where we are, um, this 82% is about right for you know, back to normal. Uh, what does it take you know, or how are we doing it as a country and as an economy to get back to where we were previously? And right now we're at about 80% uh, of that. So what does that mean for us? So you know, the whole world has changed in 2020. Uh, so our business models have had to change. We have to make, uh, we have to make the, the adaptation. Uh, we have to do things differently uh, in, in order to remain relevant and actually, and, and, you know, keep good fire protection out there in, in these, uh, these buildings and other locations. Um, one of the things that we're seeing here is, is an increase in e-commerce. So you see that in general, uh, Amazon deliveries are, are up, uh, UPS, FedEx deliveries are up. Um, we're also seeing that with extinguishers. We're seeing more activity uh, online uh, through um, sales. You know, Amorex has a new uh, web store and we're seeing, you know, just because we don't have that same contact that we have have had previously, people are going to a web store to make purchases where that hasn't been the case previously. Um, um, you know, one of the things you can do at this time is review your customer, uh, customer concentration and the types of customers that you have. So diversification is, is really important. So when you do a hazard analysis that you're, you're looking not just at extinguishers, uh, but you're looking at your, your systems, your restaurant systems, your industrial systems, your vehicle systems, uh, if that is an uh, opportunity, and if it's not an opportunity, it's time to you know, take a hard look at that and see if those things are uh, appropriate for you to, um, to pursue. You know, a, a short and reliable supply chain is something that's really important in, in these trying times uh, to make sure that when you do your hazard analysis, when you do um, go to a new location, that if you need a product, you, you can get that quickly because you're, you're there to either make a sale uh, of a new life safety product or, um, um, you know, uh, correct a, a hazard um, that's um, that, that needs to be. Uh, um, I'm sorry, but but uh, you, you need to put a new extinguisher for for the correct hazard. Um, you know, one of the things that this that you'll need to do too is you know address any cash flow issues. Um, one of the things that you, you see too in this um, this 82% back to normal um, index is that you know uh, the, uh, the hours of, of small business uh, work is 20% below 
uh, what it was uh, pre uh, pre pandemic. So uh, it, it's it creates scheduling issues. It creates um, you know, issues for cash flow. Can you go collect from a customer? Can your customer actually let you in the door when you schedule something? Um, and then there's all sorts of variables uh, related with the virus that that make things uh, more challenging for uh, for a small business or for for any FED. But like we said, it's not all bad news. There are, are there are good opportunities out there. So there are things that are growing, and you know the question remains that when uh, you are able to get into a, a building for the first time, um, do you do a hazard analysis before you you take over a service account? Do you do a hazard analysis on a new opportunity? You know, one of the things to consider is you know warehouse space. We see a growth in warehouse space, so. You know, Amazon warehouses are, are a big deal, uh, big opportunities there. Um, make sure you do your hazard analysis to make sure an ABC extinguisher is the right extinguisher. Uh, perhaps there's something else you know, more appropriate. And then not only with the, the large warehouse spaces, there are smaller warehouses. There are these you know, new industry and portable, um, portable warehouses where they're basically a warehouse in a, a Connex and that Connex is delivered uh, to a, a much smaller store and things are dealt uh, out, out of this uh, this mini warehouse and so it's it's a new emerging market uh, it needs um, fire protection as well you know also con consider delivery vehicles we talked about the you know the uptick in uh, deliveries for Amazon UPS and FedEx you know with all of the things that are being delivered these days um, is a two and a half pound extinguisher really enough and that may be all that's required on some of these uh, delivery vehicles but you're carrying more uh, lithium-ion batteries you're carrying more uh, flammable liquids um, there are all sorts of opportunities to you know, to review an extinguisher and make sure that it's the right extinguisher for the hazard you know, work trucks and transportation you know when, when you have a a new um, a new waste management facility. You know, make sure you've got the right uh, extinguisher on the garbage truck. Make sure you've got the right uh, extinguisher in, in the facility. Um, you know, maybe it's a high flow that you need. Maybe it's a uh, just a compliance flow product. Um, you know, also emerging are uh, mobile refueling hazards. So we see this uh, trend continuing. It's a, it was an emerging market before. COVID, but now that there are uh, more people concerned about uh, contact, um, you know, mobile refueling continues to be uh, a growing and emerging market. Um, and not only are we looking at, you know, just the, the vehicle itself or the extinguisher to make sure we've got the right size extinguisher, um, we want to make sure we've got the right flow rate on that uh, product. So maybe a high flow extinguisher is appropriate for a mobile refueling but also in the surrounding areas, you know, if this goes into a parking garage, if mobile refueling is is a thing in your area, then you have the opportunity uh, to look at you know the parking garages or you know where they're doing this mobile refueling to make sure there's the right extinguisher in, in those locations as well. And then when assuming a new service account, so the hazard analysis is really important. And this ties in directly to this you know, back to normal uh, that we're all trying to get to is that you know some businesses have been closed, some are closed um, at, at some level of capacity that they have a, a reduced capacity. And so when you go into uh, this building for the first time, it, it, is it the right product in the right place? So it's important to verify the work that was done previously. So. You know, it's very easy to walk into a building. Um, it's very easy to you know, walk up to an extinguisher, put your initials on the tag, and, and then uh, walk on. It's easy to do that. We get in that routine sometimes. So in, in this in this time of uh, changing business and changing climates, we, we need to do that hazard analysis to make sure the extinguisher that we're checking off is the right extinguisher, it's in the right place, and the hazard has not changed because that's another issue that we see now a lot as people come into a building, you know things have changed since they left, since they were last there. You know consider box stores. So in my local big box store, when I walk into the building, there used to be right at the right at the front 
a point of sale aisle and they were trying to get you to buy you know hammers or candy bars or whatever it was but now when you walk in not only is that first point of sale area full but the whole first aisle that i see is full of hand sanitizers and with that new load of flammable liquids is an extinguisher that's 75 feet away and that was placed there six months ago is that the right extinguisher and is that um, the right size of extinguishers, the right type of extinguisher? We have to ask all of those questions. You know, perhaps even um, in an outdoor um, scenario that uh, the, the the propane tanks, there, there's more propane tanks than there were before because of the increase in outdoor activity, including grilling and, and RVs. Um, is the right extinguisher on the aisle with the many propane cylinders? Are, are there more there than there used to be? So. It's very important to to look at those, um, and I will say, you know, back to the sanitizer thing. Uh, if you do go and look at uh, NFPA YouTube channel, they do have a good video on um, hand sanitizers and the flammability of those things. Uh, it's a good video. I recommend watching that. Um, and keep in mind, um, in all of this, things have changed. Our, our lives have changed. Our hazards have changed. Our businesses have changed. So it's very important to inspect the fire protection equipment. And in some cases, you know, fire marshals are not allowing businesses to open until um, the uh, fire protection equipment has been inspected and signed off on. So it's important to go in, do a thorough inspection, make sure it's the right product for the right hazard. Let's give our, uh, our customers you know, um, you know, the value that they expect uh, for, for that inspection. Um, you know, verify the hazards. You know, make sure not only the hazard is is the same hazard as it was before, but those hazards have not moved, and that the extinguishers are, are appropriate for uh, the location, or if it's the system that you're inspecting, make sure it's the right system uh, for that application. Conduct a new hazard analysis, particularly if you're unfamiliar with the location, uh, or if it just looks you know, very different to you. That new hazard analysis, you know, there's great guides in NFPA 10. Annex E uh, of NFPA 10 is a great resource. I highly recommend spending some time uh, with that. It, it tells you all about extinguisher uh, selection, location, and then placement. Uh, that's a big piece of this because as your, your fuel loads change, let's say with hand sanitizers, you know, maybe your, your extinguisher placement uh, needs to change as well. So instead of 75 feet, you may have to come to 50 feet. Uh, so that, that's something to, to review. Um, you know, as we said, restaurants move things around on a regular basis anyway, and with all of the changes that we're seeing now, there, there's a good chance that restaurants have changed uh, the way they operate. And so we want to install the extinguisher in the right place too. Um, and then, you know, something that's just, just good business, um, but it will help uh, you in, in the long term is, is building relationships with the, the local business owner, the local manager, um, because everybody is still having a hard time, particularly with cash flows, restaurants having a hard time with cash flows. You know, work on that relationship uh, so that you can bring a product into compliance and you know, help your, your customer out as well. You know, make, uh, make it a safe environment um, and then uh, you know, building that relationship will help you uh, in that small business community, that restaurant community. These people will, uh, they talk to each other uh, now and, and they'll be happy to uh, talk about you, especially if you give them great service and you know, provide them the right product in the right place. And then uh, final thing is, you know, as, as we've all um, witnessed these changes, there's opportunities for industry involvement. And, and as a manufacturer, you know, we participate uh, not only in uh, the Fire Equipment Manufacturers Association, we, we advocate for uh, fire protection products, you know, extinguishers, systems, and, and the related items. Um, you know, we uh, continue to work through uh, to you know, push for the uh, US government to make sure that you know, extinguishers are important and uh, required. Um, in part, we've seen some government sales improve, so that's that's good. Um, it's a good opportunity there. Um, but also, um, you know, if you're not involved with with NAFED, it's a good time to get involved with NAFED to see how um, people are conducting business because things, you know, if you look at that map that I showed uh, early on, 
things are different in, in different states and they're it'd be good to have that additional resource to to talk to and then finally just nfba 10 is a great resource and you know highly recommend going back to nfba 10 to uh, review your hazard analysis uh, and, and extinguisher options and, and just um just along those lines we'll do just a, a real quick um, slide richard will we'll go over something here just so that you uh, are familiar we, we all know these uh, these classifications but we think it's worth a review uh, since we're talking about hazard analysis Hey, thanks guys. So just real quick, everyone wanted to touch, if you're probably unfamiliar, uh, well, you're probably familiar with the classes of fires already, but if you're not, uh, we're gonna address some extinguishers um, in just a little bit that fit a lot of these classes. But just real quick, so a class A uh, is any ordinary combustible, so anything that leaves an ash, um, when you're talking about home, furniture, uh, drapes, paper, anything like that. Uh, class B, is a lot of petroleum or oil-based components, and these are liquids and gases, so even stuff like propane uh, is considered a Class B fire. And Class C, what this means is that the extinguisher is safe to discharge onto live electrical equipment, and there's not gonna be any sort of charge that is relayed back to the operator. Class D combustibles are combustible metals, and there, there are kind of two classes of extinguishers when we look at class Ds, uh, one being um, useful on most all types of metals, including you know, titanium, aluminum, um, but the, the second extinguisher in the class is really just strictly for lithium fires, and it was developed by the U.S. Navy, and it's really only beneficial on uh, lithium and not other types of fires. So in class K is uh, strictly for use inside of kitchens and it uses a, a chemical that when it touches the hot grease and animal-based fats, it goes through a process called saponification, which really cools uh, the oils below the flash point and, and creates almost like a soap and a film on top of the grease not allowing for oxygen to get back to that grease and allow for reignition. And we'll touch on some of these in a little bit, but just want to make sure everybody was familiar from the start on what these classes and the symbols mean. Yeah, th thanks Richard. And, you know, I think that just leads right into, you know, it's kind of a tough question for, for some of us, but we want to ask that is, you know, are, are we, fire protection professionals or are we just hanging tags and you know we we believe that we're all fire protection uh, professionals and um we want to make sure that we're doing you know the, the proper hazard analysis you know we, we know the hazards in the area and we've got the right extinguisher in the right place um you know and along those lines you know we want to show you some of the options that are out there that they're not just your typical you know abc extinguisher so richard's I uh, got some more information on, um, you know, other products that are uh, not just your, your typical uh, ABC. Yeah, so the first thing, uh, first product we're going to look at are high flow extinguishers, or sometimes you may hear them referred to as fast flow extinguishers, and, and both of those are synonymous with each other. So uh, in some applications, there might be a need uh, to use a high flow extinguisher rather than a compliance flow or just your ordinary extinguisher. And these extinguishers meet the one pound per second flow rate that is required by NFPA 10 for 3D fires, pressure fires, and obstacle class B hazards. So they are available in different types of dry chemicals. Uh, these include ABC, Purple K, and sodium bicarbonate or regular chemical. And these extinguishers also have a longer discharge range uh, than your standard compliance flow extinguishers. And what this does is this allows for the operator to stand back further from the fire and avoid some of the high heats that accompany the Class B fires. Uh, so the high flow extinguisher is perfect for areas where highly combustible materials are present. Um, they are ideal for use in propane filling stations, gas stations, automotive repair facilities, painting areas, marine terminals, and construction sites. And these are really simple 
yet effective extinguishers that discharge a large amount of chemical in a short amount of time, uh, providing a lot of knockdown power on, on the fire. So yeah, where should, it, go ahead, guy. Sorry, Richard. Um, the, the, you know, you bring up a good point on ABC dry chemical. Um, it's a highly effective product uh, and, you know, we, we use it a lot. It's, it, you know, it's probably the most common extinguisher uh, on the market. It, it is a great, uh, like I said, it's a great effective product, but there are certain places where ABC dry chemical extinguishers um, should not be used. Um, and, you know, when we talk about our hazard analysis, you know, it, it will reveal some of these options out there. So I think you're going to talk a little bit about that now, aren't you? Yeah, so the first thing we want to look at uh, is are the clean agent extinguishers. And so clean agent fire suppressant uh, is stored as a liquid under pressure that turns into a gas on discharged air. And this means that there's no residue left behind. And they come in a variety of agents, um, the first being Halotron 1, and this is an HCFC blend. The second, Halon 1211. Now, Halon is heavily regulated, so they can't make any more of it. So the only kind of Halon that you'll see in circulation right now is reclaimed Halon. So it is a little pricier than Halotron, um, but Halotron and what you see here, Novec 1230, those both uh, carry a very low ozo depletion value and uh, a global warming potential, they're very low, much lower than Halon 1211. So we're really seeing uh, both of those agents kind of replacing Halon 1211 as, as the EPA fades that out. So when we look uh, at the uptick in aircraft freight, for example, the rapid growth of e-commerce and peak shipping season that we're seeing right now this time of year are both contributing to record freight rates that aren't expected to really drop anytime soon. So the high ocean transportation and COVID-19 related delays are driving a lot more demand for air cargo and contributing to a continued increase in air shipping rates. And increased air rates uh, directly translates to an increase in aircraft usage. So even though the, um, the regular passenger aircraft we're seeing that arena slow. The air freight side of things and the cargo side of things is, is really starting to increase. Um, and, and this sort of increase uh, translates to a demand for clean agent type extinguishers. And we can imagine why a clean agent would be necessary in an aircraft over a dry chemical, because a dry chemical is such a fine powder that it would really infiltrate every component once discharged in the aircraft as well as you know ABC chemicals can be corrosive to aluminum in aircraft so even though it may not be evident uh, right out of the gate and after the initial cleanup the damage may reveal itself a little later on down the road so also looking at sensitive electronics and computer server rooms with the increase in e-commerce means an increase in data usage and this increase in data usage leads to a need for more data centers, as well as companies working remote, hosting training sessions and webinars, just like we're doing right now. So there are two key drivers for this massive increase in demand. Firstly is the need for computing capacity, which, by, which is driven by the large scale move to working from home for many businesses and institutions. And the second core driver is the need for speed and computing power, and this is really where you know, high performance computing comes in, into play. Uh, digital infrastructure has never been more important to the world economy as it is today. And the associated uh, uptake and usage of digital applications and video calling, you know, telehealth, e-commerce, e-learning, like a lot of our schools are doing nowadays, uh, alongside those uh, for entertainment as well as people just spending more times outdoors is causing a surge in need for data capacities. And to protect these valuable data centers, uh, to limit downtimes, it is important to have the proper extinguisher for the job. And that is really where a lot of these clean agent type of extinguishers come into play. So next is water mist. 
you know, what are water mist extinguishers? And a water mist fire extinguisher uh, contains a discharges deionized water in a spray forms a fine mist curtain. And, and these water droplets are so fine, which uh, is extremely powerful and efficient in cooling and suffocating a fire, that they leave no residue and don't leave the area soaking wet. So you know, how do they work? So these extinguishers, again, use deionized water, which is non-conductive and non-toxic. And when discharged, the water uh, is expelled through a unique spray nozzle, which releases the water in microscopic particles particles. And uh, these water par particles include, uh, provide intensive cooling, like I said, to the fire and, and fill the air sufficiently to decrease the oxygen that is feeding that fire, uh, thus suffocating it. But um, because the water droplets are so small, they leave no trace and they do not allow for the transfer of electrical energy. Back to the operator, giving it a class C rating, uh, along with the deionized water aspect. This class rating makes these water mist extinguishers a safe option for things such as electronics, books, um, et cetera. So what kind of classes are of fires are they good for? Um, water mist extinguishers are kind of revolutionizing the realm of extinguishers because they are proving to be an effective, clean, and safe alternative for many types of fires. And most can be used on class A, combustible, so anything that leaves an ash, as well as class C electrical fires, because uh, they do not uh, conduct any electricity back to the operator. So where are some applications where the water mist might be useful? And because water mist is, is you know, so effective on many classes of fire, they are ideal for many work and home settings. Also as well, when we talk about you know class D, a lot of times there is a, a, a little confusion with lithium ion batteries and actual lithium metal. So the two are, are not the same, both do not require a class D extinguisher. Uh, the water mist extinguisher here is, is ideal for these lithium ion batteries. So all these batteries that can be recharged, unlike lithium, which is a one-time use. So when we want to discharge this water mist onto a lithium ion fire, it, it does a great job of cooling that lithium extinguishing the fire and at the same time it does not conduct electricity um, back to the operator. So some other applications other than live electrical equipment are healthcare facilities. Since they're non-magnetic they they're available to go into MRI rooms, operating rooms, and, and veterinarian clinics. As the pandemic stresses the healthcare system, you know, critical fire and life safety needs must be balanced with patient care and hospitals as well as these new temporary makeshift facilities that we see popping up um, due to this pandemic and these units are popular in the medical arena safer medical applications and uh, not only are these units appropriate for brick and mortar type hospitals but also since the same occupancy and life safety codes apply to temporary temporary facilities uh, we see these going in a lot of those temporary facility type applications. So wet chemical or K-class extinguishers. So, you, so initially you might ask yourself, what are class K fires? And class K fires are those that are fueled by flammable liquids uh, unique to cooking, such as cooking oils and greases um, that are vegetable and animal-based fats. And when these substances breach very high temperatures as they naturally do in a kitchen setting, a sudden and potentially volatile fire can, can easily ignite. And these can rapidly spread due to flammability of the actual substance. And due to the high volume of uh, cooking done in a lot of these commercial kitchens, which include not only restaurants, but cafeterias, food trucks, bakeries, and a lot of catering businesses, Class K fires are a common and constant threat. Uh, therefore, uh, for the safety of those in the kitchens, as well as the customers and the patrons, you know, it's really vital that the correct fire extinguisher um, and in, in a lot of cases, fire suppression kitchen systems are in place. And a, a Class K fire extinguisher can be used to extinguish fires that are fueled by flammable liquids unique to cooking, uh, like cooking oils and greases. So when do we need a Class K extinguisher? Um, 
while Class K fires do involve flammable liquids, uh, we need to be aware that Class B fire extinguishers, which are rated for flammable liquids such as petroleum and gases, like we talked about just a few slides prior, uh, are not efficient enough to handle these high temperature uh, cooking oil and grease fires that occur in kitchens. And it's also important to remember that the use of water on cooking oil and grease fires uh, will not only spread the fire since the oil is not absorbed into the water, but rather transport it. And we, I'm sure we've all seen you know, YouTube videos and these viral videos that come about where people just don't seem to understand this and, and they go dump on a bucket of water on a grease fire and it just makes it exponentially worse. So only Class K fire extinguishers are adequate for these Class K fires and should always be in, uh, close in hand uh, in a commercial kitchen or food trucks types of scenarios. And, and these extinguishers utilize a potassium acetate solution, which interacts with the cooking oil, grease or fat uh, to create a type of foam blanket that blankets the oil and grease, cooling it and therefore preventing it from being fed with more oxygen and dropping it below that flash point temperature that we talked about a few slides ago with the process called saponification, which really is just another fancy word for it makes soap. Um, so in today's commercial kitchens, they're ever evolving to meet customer demands, uh, especially during today's coronavirus. And in today's commercial kitchens, selecting the correct restaurant fire suppression system is critical to protecting people, uh, property, and business. And uh, there are certain types of complex kitchens um, that we have seen in, in increased demand for recently with uh, more co consumers using food delivery services as part of their efforts to practice you know, social distancing and, and due to uh, COVID-19. And these delivery services like Grubhub and Uber Eats are all part of a multi-billion dollar online food delivery industry that often leverages things called cloud kitchens for uh, food preparation and a lot of people aren't familiar with these cloud kitchens because you really never heard of, of the term you know you just kind of see the end result of the food being made and then, and then you get the food but you don't really know and see where it comes from uh, so cloud kitchens which are also referred to as uh, virtual kitchens or ghost kitchens are facilities in which sometimes upwards of 50 different restaurants operate under one roof uh, each with their own commercial kitchens optimized for delivery only operations. And with these types of developments, many complex commercial cooking environments are expanding in their appliance lineups and introducing a variety of new equipment. And this creates a need for not only class A, but also class K hazards. And when we talk about class K hazards, these wet chemical extinguishers um, fit that profile perfectly. Next is carbon dioxide. And according to the NFPA 10, you know, some of the types of hazards and equipment that carbon dioxide systems protect uh, are flammable liquid materials, electrical hazards, such as transformers, switches, circuit breakers, um, rotating equipment, and all in all electrical equipment. Um, engines utilizing gasoline and other flammable liquid fuels, ordinary combustibles such as paper, wood, textiles, and, and hazardous solids. And, and Increase in data center usage may call for, for some of these extinguishers to be used. They're a great alternative for clean agent extinguishers. Uh, and fire protection applications generally can be divided into two basic categories. Uh, the first being applications that allow for the use of water-based sprinklers, and two, special hazards that require the use for some other uh, fire extinguishing agent, such as carbon dioxide, halon, uh, halotron, dry chemical, wet chemicals, um, or foams. And according to industry consensus, special hazard applications actually comprise of approximately 20% of total fire protection applications. And of those special hazard applications, approximately another 20% of the market is protected by these CO2 extinguishers. So some benefits of CO2 extinguishers is um, they're great extinguishers for industrial high voltage applications, um, electrical cabinets, electrical motors. Uh, they have a softer discharge, um, discharging basically a big white cloud uh, of snow. And, you know, easy to train with, good for frequent nuisance fires, but they do 
carry some limitations with them. Um, the first being the units are fairly heavy. You know, it, it's a large stout unit and they're, they're heavier than traditional units. Uh, they, since it is just merely a gas that comes out, they do carry a short discharge range um, and, and that is greatly affected by temperature. So uh, they're really ideal for indoors. Once you go outside and you have the elements working against you with the wind and the heat, um, the, the benefit of these CO2 extinguishers really starts to diminish. And they carry no class A rating. Um, it's a limited class B rating. And, and since it displaces the O2 in the room, we really need to be able to watch where we use and place these extinguishers because uh, they're not ideal for places such as confined spaces. And you know, going back to NFPA 10, back in the annex, um, annex section H really addresses these confined space issues well. And it's a good source when looking at using some of these carbon dioxide extinguishers. So here we have water extinguishers. And you know, NFPA 10 requires water type extinguishers to be installed for the protection of pool chemicals. In fact, it demands that only water type extinguishers be installed in areas uh, such that containing such chemicals and that absolutely no ordinary ABC dry chemical extinguisher be located there. Um, so for instance, superheated cooking oils and delicate electronic equipment require a special kind of extinguisher, but the NFPA 10 standard does not forbid a dry chemical extinguisher nearby to protect other furnishings of that you know, building structure or, or area. So uh, why does the fire code demand the water type and prohibit the popular ABC dry chemical type of extinguisher near such a hazard? And simply put, it's because when the agent in the dry chemical extinguisher comes into contact with pool chemicals, uh, an explosive compound can result. So not simply put, when uh, the ammonium, ammonium compounds or ammonium salts discharged with these dry chemicals from the uh, extinguisher reach the chlorine, which in this case acts as the oxidizer, uh, nitrogen trichloride is formed. And, and this, this nitrogen trichloride is a very explosive compound. So the NFPA dictates that only these water extinguishers be used around these pool chemicals. So we, we wanna remember that since these water type extinguishers can also be dangerous in some aspects. We want to remember not to discharge a stream of water um, in, in these water extinguishers onto an electrical out, outlet, um, live electrical equipment, uh, because since it's not deionized ionized water, it is simply a stream of water. Uh, there is a risk of electrical current being conducted back to the operator. So now in addition to those few things, uh, these, these water extinguishers are available with loaded stream to help into deep seated fires and and with an antifreeze charge to where it, they are not subject to freezing quite as much and they're a little more resistant to uh, cold temperatures. And I think that's it, Guy. Yeah, thanks, Richard. I appreciate you going through uh, some of those extinguishers uh, with us so that we can you know, do our, our hazard analysis and you know, make sure we've got the right extinguisher in the right place. Um, and that's, uh, that, that's our presentation uh, for today. So I'll turn it back over to, to Jennifer. All right, perfect. Well, thank you, guys. That was really great. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have come in, so I'm just going to kind of throw them out there and either one of you want to take them and grab them you can so um, our first question is have you seen AHJs around the US uh, stating that fire extinguisher service being essential um, and how do you respond to a client not allowing you in so kind of a two-part question are they being considered essential and then how would you respond or recommend that they respond if they're not allowed in to perform the service yeah, that, that, that's a great question. And it is, you know, one of the bigger challenges in um, it, it, that we're facing today in the fire protection industry. And yes, we have seen um, the extinguisher service providers uh, 
and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Declared, I guess, uh, essential yep. uh, workers because they are. Um, you know, it's life safety. You have a uh, people occupying a building. If there's a fire hazard there, then they need uh, fire protection. And what happens in this instance is, if you've got a if you've got a building owner that's not allowing you in, that's a really challenging situation. Um, you know, and I'm not sure that there's a, a great way to do that other than just to have the conversation with your, your customer and you know make sure that you're you're trying to build that relationship uh, you know with that person. They may not want you in the building, um, but you have to have that relationship so you can gain their trust. So you can just say, you know, we're just trying to follow um, you know the, uh, the fire codes here. We want to make sure you've got the best fire protection uh, available to you. And it's it's you know up to you and I to to come to uh, um, you know, a a safe way to do this you know something that makes you feel comfortable if it's wearing a mask so that um, so that, that they're comfortable and, and we're comfortable then that that's what we need to do to make sure that we're providing the best fire protection available for our users. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, all right, so we've got another one. Um, this one is what standard year of NFPA 10 did water um, the class A extinguisher become the required type of extinguisher near the pool chemical storage areas? Mm -hmm. So that that has been in NFPA 10 for many years. So I, I've been uh, I've been here for for 17 years and okay. you know, it's been there at least 17 years. I don't know exactly what date, but it's been there at least that long. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, looks like we've got another one too. Um, are there any innovations from Amrex that could help optimize the inspection and service process at all? So are, are, are we looking for um, you know, new ways to do this? There, there's certainly lots of technologies out there and, you know, and InspectPoint is one of those um, opportunities that they're you know an emerging market for this um, and you know we certainly encourage uh, use of those um, those type of technologies it's it's great for record keeping it makes it easy to communicate with your customer exactly what you've done um, you, you can in some cases you know show them um, you know the deficiencies on the extinguisher and, and show them exactly why they need a new product so Amrex does not uh, directly have a solution for that, but we are working with our, our partners in the industry to uh, to provide that. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, in speaking with uh, Drew before today's webinar too, he mentioned a QR code um, that's mm -hmm. that's uh, going to be used and can be used with with Amrex and being able to scan that to to pull up the information and service the extinguisher. So perfect, perfect. Um, We've got another question. Um, this one is, if I understand correctly, a lithium free, uh, oh, sorry, not free, a lithium fire requires a class D extinguisher, but a fire involving lithium ion batteries does not. Um, is this correct? And if so, what types of agents are suggested for handling lithium ion batteries? Yeah, Jennifer, so, uh, I touched on that a little bit in the presentation, but let me elaborate a little bit more on that um, since we, we didn't touch on Class D extinguishers. So <clears throat> when we look at Class D lithium extinguishers, uh, they use a fine copper powder to really smother the fire and the copper acts as a type of heat sink, um, pulling the heat out of that fire. So the, the differences between lithium metal and lithium ion is lithium ion batteries really don't contain any any sort of lithium and they're rechargeable just regular batteries um, as where lithium metal is essentially a battery but it's it's a one-time use type of battery so the the extinguishers that are used for lithium metals it's it's really just that one copper extinguisher and it is only good for the lithium metal fires. So it, it's confused a lot with lithium ion, but when we look at a lithium ion battery fire, so just your regular rechargeable batteries, um, the, the water mist extinguisher is a great, a great extinguisher to use on that. 
and, and it's actually been suggested by NFPA 10 to be the proper extinguisher uh, to extinguish those types of lithium ion fires. And because really what we want to do is, is just cool the fire, uh, put it out uh, with standard water, but we want to use a water extinguisher that is not going to have a risk of uh, transferring any sort of electrical current back to the operator, which is where that uh, water mist extinguisher comes into play, uh, having that uh, class C rating. Perfect. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, I'm looking to see, I think that might be all of the questions. I'll give it just a couple more minutes. So if you have a question um, for Guy or Richard um, about anything that was discussed or sort of anything that's kind of come to your mind, now is your, now is your chance, you've got them here. Um, you know, we can really put them on the spot here. Um, so if you have any other questions, feel free to drop those into that question box. Um, if and this always happens, right? You're on these presentations and something comes up after the fact. As soon as you mm -hmm. close out your go-to webinar, you think, oh man, I should have asked that question. Um, if that is you and that happens, then feel free to, to email myself, email sales, email Guy, email Richard, um, and we can and get the appropriate person on onto that. Um, I think, Guy and Richard, that may be all of the questions that we have. Um, I would like to thank you um, on behalf of the entire Inspect Point team and sort of everybody on this call today. Thank you so much for this presentation and all of this information. It was really great, very valuable, very educational. Um, do you have any final words um, on your end before we sort of wrap this up or? Not, not really, Jennifer. I do want to say one more thing. You know, I, I want to kind of reiterate that you know, having the wrong extinguisher can result in increasing the fire risk and damages from a fire. So if anyone is ever um, curious as if their kitchen or workspace is protected by the right fire extinguisher, I, I want them to, to not hesitate to reach out to the guy or myself um, if they have any questions about proper extinguishers for certain hazards. Uh, and, and if the, you know, they go to our website, amrex-fire.com, all of our contact info can be there, you know, and when you call, more than likely, I'll be the one to pick up the phone and talk to you personally. So I hope I want everyone to feel comfortable doing that and that we are here to help um, and we're eager to help in the protection really of life and property. Perfect. And I'd say, uh, you know, first of all, thank you, Jennifer, for setting this up and thank you for all those, uh, you know, watching for your time. Um, you know, we're, we're all hopeful that we'll uh, get everything back to normal. So good luck and, and stay safe. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. This has been great. I will make sure to put your um, contact information in the follow-up email that's going out. Um, so if you're watching this live right now, you will get a recording of it. And in that email, I'll just make sure that we put your contact information. So if there are any questions, they can contact you. Um, and if you're watching the recording of it, um, then you have the information as well. Um, so once again, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Any questions, feel free to reach out to Guy, Richard, myself, or you can always email sales at InspectPoint. Um, if you would like to see a demo of InspectPoint and sort of how our um, suppression uh, portion works, um, how we work with fire extinguishers, uh, please email us at sales at InspectPoint and we can set something up for you. Um, and with that, everybody is free to go for the day. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. All right. Thank you.